आप सभी से अनुरोध करूंगी कि अपना मोबाइल फ़ोन स्विच ऑफ कर दें या साइलेंट मोड पे कैद कर दें ताकि कार्यक्रम के बीच में कोई व्यवधान ना हो I, Dr. Agni Khatkar, scientist, CSIR NPL, take the honor of extending a cordial welcome to one and all to the 83rd CSIR Foundation Day celebrations. Now I request Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, DG CSIR, to kindly welcome sir and present our token of respect and gratitude. May I now request ma'am to kindly present a token of our respect and admiration to formally welcome Professor Ajay Sood, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. We welcome you sir. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. N. Kalai Selvi to please graciously offer a token of our deep respect and warm welcome to Dr. K. Radhakrishnan, esteemed former chairman of ISRO. We welcome you, sir. Following the formal welcome, it is my distinct pleasure to invite Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, Director General of CSIR, to deliver the welcome address. Ma'am, please. Most respected and honorable Vice President of India and the Chief Guest of 83rd Foundation Day of CSIR, Shri Jagdeep Dantarji. Honorable Minister of Science and Technology and the Vice President of CSAR, who for some reason, very important reason, unavoidable reason, is not able to make himself available with us on this day, but he has left the video message which will be played later here. Esteemed Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, Professor Ajay Suji. Respected Foundation Day Speaker, Dr. Radhakrishnan Farmer, ISRO Chairman Ji. Former Director Generals of uh, CSAR, former and present directors of all the 37 national laboratories of CSIR, which are spreading across the country in 25 different states, esteemed society members, general body members, and my CSIR family, DSIR family consisting of CSIR, NC, NRDC, and CEL, all the well-wishers and the moral supporters of CSIR in the form of industry, MSME, working partner, collaborating partner, manufacturing partner, implementing agencies, self-help groups, startups, MSMEs, research scholars, students, present media, ladies and gentlemen, Namishka, Vanakam, and pleasant morning to each and every one of you. Today is a very, very special day in the history of CSR because we are celebrating the 83rd Foundation Day of CSR with the august presence of, with the gracious presence of the Honorable Vice President of India. And we are all so much gifted to have the Honorable Vice President as the Chief Guest of today's function. Sir, we are extremely proud, privileged, honored, and blessed to have you as the Chief Guest of this 83rd Foundation Day, due to which this Foundation Day assumes paramount importance. Sir, last year we celebrated our Foundation Day for about two days in Bharat Mandapam, wherein we demonstrated and we actually showcased our decadal accomplishments. And for this year, we made the focal theme of celebration as Vixit Bharat 2047. Sir, we are fully aware that the country is now strategically, scientifically, economically, socially planning for how best India could be positioned as a developed country in the global arena in the year 2047. And therefore, from CSAR side, we realize, we do realize that this is time for us and this is the right time that we should also get ourselves completely geared up 
and we should come up with a kind of a declaration on commitments, definite commitments, that what is it that CSAR will contribute to this country when the country is planning for its developed nation in the year 2047. So with this particular objective, today afternoon we have arranged for a very special conclave, leadership conclave, wherein eight of our former director generals will be sharing their ideas and they will be guiding us through their greater recommendations. And that particular session is going to be chaired by Dr. V.K. Saraswat, the honorable member from the Niti Aayog. So CSAR will take up all the recommendations and the suggestions that are going to be made by the visionary leaders who are decorating the first row of this auditorium, the former DGs, and this will be made as our roadmap and CSAR will follow in the coming years so that that becomes the contribution of CSAR to the country to place it in the global arena as Vixit Bharat in 2047. Therefore, sir, in one line, all the celebrations in CSAR are not mere celebrations. Every celebration will have its culmination with a kind of an actionable point, and CSAR will take it as ATR in the coming years. With these few words, I take this great, great opportunity to extend a very, very warm and hearty welcome to the Honorable Vice President of India to this 83rd Foundation Day of CSAR. Taking this opportunity, I extend a very, very warm welcome to Professor Ajay Sud, Dr. Radha Krishnan, Dr. Mahesh, the coordinator, and all the important delegates and participants who are decorating this particular event. And so this event, this time, is getting one additional value addition, which is APCTT is also participating. 20 delegates from 10 different countries are also joining this event. And they extend a very, very warm welcome to each and every one of those who are decorating this auditorium and you are valuing the foundation day function of CSAR. Thank you so very much. Namaskar. Dhanivad, madam. कार्यक्रम को आगे बढ़ाते हुए मैं अनुरोध करूंगी भारत सरकार के प्रधान वैज्ञानिक सलाहकार प्रोफेसर अजय कुमार सूद जी से जो विज्ञान जगत में स्वयं एक हस्ताक्षर हैं कि वे अपने शब्दों से हमें प्रेरित करें प्लीज सर ऑनरेबल वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया श्री जगदीप धनकर जी former chairman ISRO, Dr. K. Radhakrishnan, and today's founder, Foundation Day lecturer, Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, DGCSIR, honorable past DGs of CSIR who are sitting in the front row, entire CSIR fraternity, invitees and friends. It is indeed a great privilege and a pleasure for me to be a part of this 80th, 83rd Foundation Day celebration of CSIR, indeed a momentous day. My felicitation to the entire CSIR fraternity on this very happy occasion. Let me start by quoting Dr. Kalam. I quote, economic development is powered by competitiveness. The competitiveness is powered by knowledge knowledge is powered by technology and innovation." Unquote. To this I will also add, technology and innovation are powered by fundamental science. We are at a stage in history of mankind when the time lapse between the discovery in science and its technology adoption is shrinking day by day. Science and technology are truly intertwined Science depends on technology, and technology draws on scientific results. This relationship may not be always equally reciprocal. The technology may or may not use the most profound recent results of science, whereas in my observation in the last 50 years as practicing scientist, I have always seen that science always uses most recent and advanced technologies, which in turn leads to newer disruptive innovations and technologies. So it's a beautiful cycle of uh, science and technology which are intertwined. In linear model of innovation, 
basic research leads to applied research which leads to product development and then to market diffusion and deployment the linear model postulates a causal direction starting from the fundamental science the question arises often if we can move beyond the linear model we know there have been examples which do not always follow the linear model for example you all know james watt invented steam engine before the laws of thermodynamics were postulated the dominant variant of linear model is also the famous donald stokes famous diagram in 1997 wherein he showed pasteur quadrant which has both high level of fundamental knowledge as well as high level of applicability in words of professor narayan venki narayan murthy it may be useful which i find interesting to describe research not in terms of basic versus applied but rather in terms of discovery and invention in this paradigm the emphasis is to have an eye on discovery which can lead to invention for societal goods since science as an industry i are both together in the name csir csir is ideally placed to provide a platform for interaction between key partners government labs universities industries and policy makers this is already happening the triple helix partnership between scientists industry and government provides a framework for effectively advancing r&d for industry led uh, industry centric technologies supporting deep tech startups and fostering innovations this is absolutely required you will all agree for india to move towards its ambitious goal of becoming a 5 trillion trillion economy soon by making india a, pro, a major product nation i'll repeat a major product nation over and above the presently dominant service economy i am sure csir is and will be a major player in this journey in the end i wish all the very best to the csir family on this foundation day and look forward to even more glorious achievements in weeks months and years to come jai hind thank you sir for your enlightening address ladies and gentlemen please join me in welcoming on the dais the honorable vice president of india shri jag jagdeep dhankar ji sir please it could not have been more delightful for me everyone present in this room for me is a role model your contributions are spinal your contributions in silence are resonating with the last man in the last row your efforts are changing bharat a great occasion for me to be here this is a very distinguished premium platinum category that is defining the growth history of bharat home to 16th of humanity <laughs> professor ajay k sud rightly honored with the civilian distinction of padma shri principal scientific adviser to government of india his address though brief 
on account of constant of time was illuminating. He indicated synergetic stance being generated with all stakeholders to ensure sustainability of rise of Bharat. I'll have more interactions with him given by the input he has rendered here. Dr. K. Radhakrishnan, his lecture will be feast to intellect. Team excellence, team itself inheres excellence. Team is something which is harmonious. Harmony doesn't mean you keep your point of view with yourself. Harmony means you have enough space to voice the other point of view. It is heard with respect, not rejected by drop of a hat. And team excellence is the ultimate sublime evolution of it. Then Indian Space Odyssey and your life lessons, I have instructed my team to record it. I will have a look at it, and so would the millions through our platform in Rajya Sabha and Parliament. <laughs> Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, Director General, CSIR. Normally we say, the man is always in the moon. Gone are those days. She is always on the moon. With <laughs> always in action, with passion, mission, and execution. I very fondly remember the visit I had where she was there. I had the occasion to see for myself how the aviation landscape of skilling will be changed by what her team has created. I had the occasion to go to Dehradun and see another institute in her absence. We are proud of her because she <laughs> sacrificingly gives credit to everyone except herself. I was greatly touched by this reflection of Indian civilizational ethos. Dr. G. Mahesh, he is a chairperson, CSIR Foundation Day celebration. And I'm surprised he's so relaxed. <laughs> Which means he's good at planning. We are gratified and honored by the presence of those who have laid firm foundations of CSIR, who had it as disease. Dr. Mashelkar is present here. Greeting to you, sir. Dr. Samir Brahmachari is amongst us. Brahmachari may be a surname or may describe something else. I have no idea at the moment. <laughs> but then science is all about finding out. I'll do that. Dr. T. Ramaswamy. Oh, oh sir, 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 not easy. But that doesn't mean others are not. Everyone present here, particularly in the front row, is to be respected by us. Because like education, education never ends when you leave an institution. Education is lifelong learning. Same, they may have left legally CSIR, but their bond continues 
their heart bubbles when there is action and if things are not on right track they get worried i am happy no cause for them to worry at the moment those on the dais are ensuring it i must make mention of the central electronics limited chairperson mr jain for one reason the honorable minister who is very passionate about this sector he wanted to come i dissuaded him please don't he was preoccupied unavoidably he said i would love to be there i said sir always listen to the chairman rajya sabha <laughs> he has conveyed his greetings and best wishes but when he said you must go to central electronics limited i said a collapsing company why should i go he said i will not tell you why he was there to receive me the company was high up on the list of disinvestment for failures and that was the day i had distinction to give the tag of mini ratna and mr jain gave a check to the minister not to me of 11 crores but that is not discriminatory in law distinguished scientists researchers staff and esteemed audience plus my greetings to the entire scientific community in the country we are beholden to this category for the contributions they have made to make us see bharat which is before us today this day is a special day not for csi alone this is a very special day for the nation because if we go into our historical perspective we will find ages ago our bharat had scientific prowess we were global leaders we were center of the globe when it came to scientific knowledge the kind of discoveries and inventions that were made we made the world proud we lost way somewhere we are regaining that way it is your foundation day but it is integrally connected with the firm foundations of bharat you are firming up those foundations of the most vibrant functional democracy on the planet you are firming up the foundations of a nation that is on the rise as never before and the rise is unstoppable the rise is incremental and the destination of a developed nation at 2047 will be realized if not a real what i see here is your activities and activities of your sister concerns ma'am i'm careful about your gender sister concerns <laughs> am i right you are the only one on the dais but more than all of us taken together <laughs> and the smile on the face of two of them the third one is your fraternity <laughs> is an endorsement we are on way to regaining our past pristine glory in the world of science as i said your contributions are in silence i am using the word silo in positive sense your activities are in silos but the impact physically positively affirmatively lives 
of 1.4 billion people. CSIR can be defined catalyst scientifically and imaginatively for raster. C for catalyst, S for scientifically, I for imaginatively, R for raster. This has been done not by me, by Kostu Bhalekar, where is he? My OST. He handed over this chit to me. <laughs> Very thoughtful of him because he assists me in a manner where according to him I should never be sleeping. <laughs> Distinguished audience, it is my great honor, privilege, and will ever be east in my memory that I'm associating with the 83rd Foundation Day of CSIR. This is an occasion to commemorate and commend the past achievements and also to look ahead and fold a roadmap to be more significantly involved with nation's rise and global rise because Bharati stands for Vasudev Kutumkam. A journey started in 1960 when I was in class four. And where we have come is a recognition of the hard work you all have done. I am fully alive of the headwinds you face, air pockets you suffer, difficult terrain you negotiate. And on occasions, there is no due recognition. Therefore, an ecosystem that existed earlier, where you were contributing and recognition was not coming in the right form, soothing to note that in last few years, recognition for the scientific community has gone up. It has gone up in several ways including government being very serious about it. And Prime Minister's heart and soul is deeply in scientific community. His belief in your power, prowess, and capacity to generate at global level those aspects of science which matter to humanity. And I am sure, therefore, we are in good times. Now there is an ecosystem in place where our scientists can fully exploit and expand their energy, exploit their talent and contribute for the nation by unleashing their innovative skills. I was not surprised because that was my expectation. But I was in disbelief when I went through the thematic exhibition, amazing things are happening. Imagine if from a bamboo, you can have wooden flooring. Imagine from a bamboo, you can have something which is far more or equivalent to Sagwan. And Sagwan life is four decades or so. Bamboo, you do it in three years. It helps the farmer. It creates wealth. I'm making reference only to one. There were many such things. I was greatly touched. These developments reaffirm my confidence and confidence of the nation that Bharat is a factor to reckon with globally. Your tremendous accomplishments have emboldened me to assert that in research and development, it is a matter of a time 
when we'll be having our due share at the moment we are on way to it much is to be done several energies have to converse they have to converse digitally they have to work in togetherness and in tandem there has to be right amount of fiscal input i am so glad principal scientific advisor that is uppermost in his mind you may not be aware it may not be in media but he is your star batsman when it comes to getting everything for your scientific community <clears throat> let me make a brief reference union budget 2024-25 he must have put his foot down i am sure about it when budget is formed there are too many claimants he fought for your segment got that view and it can only be incremental henceforth it emphasizes the budget innovation and research and development an anusandhan national research foundation has been started i leave it at that you know it when a beginning is made even by a toddler it takes the shape over the years and is stoppably my congratulations to him to being your advocate with the government and you are an able advocate i am so glad <laughs> the growth engine of the nation any nation in the world is driven by science and technology and this is fueled by research and development this makes focus on research and development of paramount importance i call upon from this platform to come forward and generously invest in research and development i look forward for a day when our corporates will figure in top 20 global corporates that invest in research and development at the moment there is none that doesn't mean our corporates are not doing enough they are doing enough in automobile in information technology much is being done but looking to our nation's size its potential its position and the growth trajectory on which it is there our corporates need to come forward to engage in research and development the investment in research and development is lasting and this distinguished audience please note has another cutting edge soft diplomacy if you get something nations flock to you we have that power research and development is so integrated to security these days and therefore investment is for the nation investment is for growth investment is for sustainability i am concerned about one aspect in particular and that aspect fortunately for me was voiced in a survey by csir the sample size was 3000 we must not do lip service to research and development our contribution has to be substantial the result has to be substantial not cosmetic or superficial we cannot just take pride in saying so much for research and development the one doing research or development in academic institutions should not be in pursuit only of academic getting information research is not a simulation research is research and i therefore appeal to everyone concerned to have sop for it 
invest in that human resource or institution that can authentically engage in research and development. The two are separate. When I went to one of the IITs, all IITs are doing well. I'm not naming the IIT for that reason. I was amazed. The research and development was excellent. It was being done by professors and students. So we will have to be on guard that merely because fiscal resources are committed, we cannot take pride, oh, I have spent so much for research and development. Investment in research and development distinguished audience has to be correlated to tangible outcomes. And there are people in the front row who can evaluate what is tangible outcome. Friends, there is enough to say, but I'll conclude by focusing on the state of the nation. The state of the nation today is beyond my dreams. I never imagined. I did not conceive a birth that is today. I did not have that contemplation. I am referring to 1989, when I was elected to Lok Sabha. 1990, I was a union minister. I'll focus on four aspects. One, we went to Jammu and Kashmir, Srinagar, as a member of Council of Ministers. Stayed at a hotel near Dull Lake. Everything was dull, D U L L. Not even 20 souls could be seen on the road. The state of dejection and hopelessness. And it was declared in Rajya Sabha, which I preside as chairman, that last year. Two crore tourists went to Jammu and Kashmir. Where is the figure of 20? Two crores. 370, a temporary article of the Constitution. The only article labeled as temporary was taken by some people, including those who had taken oath under the Constitution to be permanent is no longer there. Second, I suffered the pain because as a student, I had studied that Bharat is a sleeping dog. As a minister, I had the occasion to see our gold was physically airlifted to be placed to two Swiss banks to sustain our fiscal credibility because our foreign exchange was around 1 billion US dollars. Now it is more than 680 billion US dollars, mind you. We are getting things back rather than giving them. I suffered the pain then when World Bank and IMF would give us not advisories or advice, but peremptorily direct, do this otherwise. And now the same institutions. IMF says India is a favorite global destination of investment and opportunity. World Bank says digitization of India and its penetration that happened in six years is otherwise not achievable in four decades and more. We are a role model according to the World Bank of Digitization. That happened there. Another aspect was there. We had a system where corruption was there rampant in power corridors. Nothing could catalyze without a middleman. Your pedigree was password to opportunity and job or a contract. 
now power corridors are fully sanitized. The middleman has disappeared from the one-sixth of humanity at least. Do we see middlemen around? No. All transactions are taking place digitally without human interface. That is the change I never imagined. This change I am seeing myself. We were living in an era where there was privileged pedigree, some thought law was not for them. They were immune to law. They were not accountable to law. Be you so high, the law is always above, was a concept not known to them. But now the privileged pedigree is filling the heat of law. And why not? Equality before law is inalienable facet of democracy. How can we call a nation, democratic nation, if some people pass away more equal than others? That is the benefit to the young minds. And as a result of that, our youth are energized. The fourth point I wish to make was about economy. Can't even tell. Size of Indian economy in 1990 was smaller than the city of London or Paris. Imagine. A decade ago, we were counted amongst fragile five nations. Cliff-hanging economy, a concern to the global community. Now we are a robust economy. We are amongst five great economies of the world. We are fifth largest on way to becoming third ahead of Japan and Germany in two years. Our economic rise is like a plateau affecting everyone. In all this, the contribution of science is there. Technology is there. Corruption would have been there. Transparent, accountable governance would not have been there unless there was technology. Digitization, penetration would not have happened but for democracy. People have adapted to technology. They may not be very literate, but they know how to use internet, how to avail services. Which means the Great Marathon March for Vixit Bharat 2047, you are the major stakeholders. You may not be that visible on the screen, but you are the driving force of it. You will have to be contributing 24 into 7. My best wishes to you, CSIR, exemplifies excellence, academic brilliance, and cutting as research. In the near future, we will doubtlessly see Bharat emerging as a global pioneer in domains of science and technology that will help us script new chapters in our growth story. I am grateful for your time and patience. Thank you so much. धन्यवाद सर हम आभारी हैं आपके कि आपने अपने प्रेरक शब्दों से हमारा मनोबल बढ़ाया और हमारा मार्गदर्शन किया मैं आप सभी से एक बार पुनः अनुरोध करूंगी कि राष्ट्रगान के सम्मान में अपने स्थान पर खड़े हो जाए पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा प्रावीर उत्कल बंगा बिंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उज्जल जगत तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय जय जय
धन्यवाद अब हमारे परम आदरणीय उप राष्ट्रपति जी इस कार्यक्रम से प्रस्थान करेंगे